Bienvenidos and welcome back to Puro Pinche Gol, the place where we discuss all things USMNT y la Selección Mexicana. My name is Adrian, joining me once again my co-host Tocayo, Adrian. Adrian, what's good, man? Hey, what's up, dude? Monday, after a nice weekend of Liga MX, Super Bowl, which we all know was a scripted. Um, <laughs> and, <laughs> and we're back here at Puro Pinche Gol. Yes, sir. Glad to be back. Good weekend of sports and uh, here to talk more of... Um, Liga Mekis, in particular, players from La Selección Mexicana who have, in it has come to light more so this past transfer window, January 2024 transfer window, but it's been happening here for the past couple windows. A trend of young, sometimes older players, but uh, for the most part young or, you know, in the middle of their or the promising career players returning to Liga Mekis or MLS from Europe. We kind of want to discuss that, discuss, you know, what is maybe causing this? Um, why are these players, you know, coming back after one or two, three short seasons in Europe? And how this affects La Selección, how this affects uh, the the player, the Mexican player in Europe? Um, and, uh, you know, what should El Tri be doing, you know, to mitigate this and, you know, going forward for El Tri? Adrián, man, just this January transfer window, which players came back for El Tri? There's only three players that actually came back from from Europe to Liga MX, specifically talking in the names of Andres Guardado, who went to León, Gerardo Arteaga, who, who came back, or I guess went back to Monterrey, uh, and Jordan Carrillo, who returned from uh, his loan spell in Sporting de Gijón and went back to uh, Santos Laguna, who uh, it's the owner of his, I guess, uh, international pass. Mm. Um. Only one real big, I guess, name there that affects La Selección, Gerardo mm-hmm. Ortiaga, the real, yes. I guess, the, the one that's really a starter for three sometimes, right? Um, mm-hmm. But, you know, there were talks that Jorge Sanchez was going to come back to Cruz Azul. That ultimately broke down. Uh, Porto did not want to let him go um, at that time, which we were discussing before this. Just odd because yeah. he doesn't play much there. <laughs> um, but just other names that have kind of came back um, from Europe in the last couple of transfer windows, Diego Lainez, Tigres, Eric Gutierrez, Omar Govea, uh, Marcelo Flores, uh, Tecatito Corona, Santiago Naveda, uh, Dagoberto Espinosa, Santiago Muñoz from Newcastle, Eugenio Pizzuto, and uh, yeah, I mean, long list there, right? I mean, uh, easy 13, 14 players there that have come back in the last couple of transfer windows, leaving really Mexico with just um, 17 players in Europe. 16 or 17, is it six, seven, uh, 17 players now that Jorge Sanchez stayed, right? Um, mm-hmm. 17 players in Europe and eight of those currently playing in the top 10 European leagues in Europe. Um, so not too promising outlook right there for El Tri. Um, how does this affect the young Mexican player who's looking to go to Europe and is seeing, you know, all these fracasos coming back, all these uh, players, you know, seeing that, hey, Mexico just has... 16, 17 players in Europe at this time, man, and only a handful of them are really playing for in, in big, big leagues. Yeah, I, you know, I personally, I think that uh, this does not help the, Mex- the Mexican player stock in Europe whatsoever. Um, I think it sets a precedent also for young players that, you know, if, if you really want to go after the money, if you really want to go get, you know, get bank. Uh, you might as well stay here in, in, in Liga MX or go to MLS. Um, I do want to say that, yes, even though I also consider this to be failure for most of these players, uh, I want to commend them for, you know, at least trying, at least going out there and trying. Uh, but, for example, in the likes of Gerardo Arteaga, I think that also, like, he has a chance. He was a gank, right, who is in a bad club in Belgium. I I. I think and I figure that he was expecting to move on to a different team or a bigger team in, you know, in less than five years. He stayed there for five years um, and it, it never happened. Uh, so either, you know, he got a reality check to realize that, you you know, you're not ready for a bigger team or a bigger league. Um, but I think he could have gone to another, uh, you know, re- decent sized team, maybe in Eredivisie or a middle of the table team in Portugal. Italy, you name it, man. I mean, he was linked to a bunch of different teams who aren't necessarily top teams in each league. Uh, but hey, you still you still remain competitive, right? So I think for the future of the of the young 
national Mexican player who's growing up in the academy or just trying to see what's up. Um, it just paints a perspective of a, you know, very, very, uh, I want to say like doom and gloom, right? Even if you try your best and you go out there and, you know, do what you're supposed to be doing, most often than usual, you're not going to succeed. Um, and I'm just afraid that this is going to make even, you know, younger talent just reject the idea of at least trying, at least going out there. Um, and then the I, I'm not going to say anything about Andres Guardado because, you know, he's freaking old. He's not even playing for, for Los Angeles <laughs> anymore. Right. Uh, but, you know, all the other guys, Diego Lainez, Eric Gutierrez, Gerard Arteaga, Omar Govea, Pisuto, uh, Corona, Marcelo Flores, all of them, I think, you know, they could have challenged themselves even further. For sure. Um, I think it kind of sets a precedent that, um, you know, if, well, first of all, I, I think we, we've discussed it before, um, how Liga MX pays, pays a premium for mm-hmm. uh, seleccionados, uh, uh, Mexicanos, right, that, that do well. Um, that gets, you know, multiplied by a factor when they go to Europe and they decide, you know that they're 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 going to be on the move from that team that they were in Europe, and there might be a couple teams like you said in Portugal or uh, España or whatever other countries, right? Um, that are willing to pay for their services, but they're always going to get outbid by by uh, teams from Liga MX, always. And um, you know, I that 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 kind of sets a precedent to players going to Europe. That um, I think on the flip coin flip side of what you said, um, maybe people or players will eventually say, "Hey, if I go to Europe, I could try, and there, if I quote unquote fail, I could always come back to Liga Mekis and make bank." Um, yeah. There's always there's always that plus side for them, right? Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, I mean, it, it doesn't paint a pretty pictures knowing that um, you know so many other. And three players before them have have come and tried in Europe and haven't lasted too long. Um, I'm surprised that um, what's his name Gerardo Ortega lasted that long with um, with uh, Gank. I didn't realize it was five years already. Um, I mean, he was he was doing great, man. I mean, he yeah. he was actually starting. He was playing pretty much every single week. He had you know uh, uh, Europa League opportunities. He played in in UCL with Gank. Um, I just think that everything fell apart whenever. He came for I think the Nations League and the Gold Cup. It was, there was um, a, co- a couple of matches that he came over here, uh, and when while he was with Mexico, they changed coach. Uh, and when he when he when he went back to Genk, it, it was just you know I guess the the boat had already left the the mm-hmm. shore, and it was kind of late for him. So he he fell off the I guess current coach radar. Yeah. Can, can, couldn't make it, but to me it's like to to your point. They already know, right? They know for a fact that Liga Make is going to pay a premium for any Mexican player who's an, not necessarily an outlier, but above average, right? Because what you have on Liga Make is, is average. Um, so why not just keep on going? Like, you you know, you, you, you're you banking on yourself that when you turn 28, you know, 26, 27, 28, you're still going to have enough, uh, I guess, name, or recognition in Liga MX, that when you raise your hand and you say, hey, I want to go back to Mexico, the likes of America, Cruz Azul, Chivas, Tigres, Monterrey, they're going to look up for you and they're going to pay you whatever you're asking for. Because it's also not a lie that there isn't that many strong talent, Mexican talent specifically, in Liga MX. Yeah, we see it time and again for the big teams, the five you mentioned, maybe six, seven mm-hmm. others, or two or three others. Um those positions are filled by extranjeros, right? I mean, we know that they have to start. What is it? Three, three seleccionados mexicanos per per, per starting eleven. Um, so uh, that is a premium. But uh, yeah, I mean, we know that those rosters are are filled with extranjeros just because, like you said, there's not many above average uh, mexicanos, and when they are above average, they get picked up right away. Um, <laughs> do you think? Liga MX is, is the culprit here, the big culprit responsible for you know these players coming back. You know, I don't, I don't, I don't really want to make Liga MX the main reason why they're all coming back, right? Um, it is definitely a contributor, maybe a catalyzer of the situation, but I think also 
we will maybe also have to look at ourselves and just realize that, hey, at this point in time, our players are not uh, at the level that we think they are, right? Because we keep on thinking that Mexican players are maybe a slightly above a Peruvian player or a Colombian player or at the same level as a Colombi Colombian player. But truth is, maybe they're, they're, they, are, they aren't. And it, I think it has to do with a more holistic approach of how are we prepping the infrastructure around the development of these young, these young players to be more competitive? Are we providing enough resources for coaches and staff to be more prepared so they can pass on the latest best practices that you know you see in England, that you see in Eredivisie, that you see in countries that are essentially uh, famous or well known for developing talent? Uh, so it Liga Mekis, yes, they have some. Uh, they, they are we can blame them at, at some point, but. I don't think it's uh, fair to say that they are the main reason why they are not, you know, young, young talent, young Mexican talent is not succeeding in, in Europe and the main reason why they want to come back. I also want to say that as a fellow Mexican outside of Mexico is it's very enticing to always, you know, romanticize or just think of the idea of going back home. You know, you always have this idea of going back home. You get this nostalgia, this, uh, nostalgic thought of hey maybe i want to go back to you know where i came from and with my family and all that stuff it's difficult to be homesick but i i'm i just want to think that maybe this some of these young players don't really have the the support system around them to make them realize that hey you're betting on yourself you're improving yourself if you keep on going this path right if you're consistent if you keep you know if you do what you have to do more often than 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 you think you're going to set yourself up for success and you're going to have this amazing future, right? Whether if it's making a breakthrough, uh, through, making a breakthrough on a European team or just coming back home and, you know, getting picked up by a big team. Yeah. So a lot of factors. Liga make is playing mm -hmm. a factor, the, the comfort of the player, um, that the long, the willingness to go back home, uh, just kind of all pretty much, play a role right into into the reason we see all these mexican that's pretty back. much what happened to her Ortega. he just said yeah. hey i want to go home i want to go back home like i want to mm -hmm. go back to mexico it wasn't necessarily a situation of he's not getting you know enough plate well of course not getting the plate then that he wanted right but it was more of a i just want to go back to to my country yeah um Speaking of that, man, how does Mexico mitigate this? Uh, you know, I know we have on our on our show notes. Should they start looking for dual nationals? Speaking of that, today uh, it was announced that Mexico uh, has uh, acquired the services of the Brazilian Matheus Royce Race, whatever however you say his name, um, the sub seven, it's sub eighteen uh, player that uh, you know he uh, he was born in Mexico, right? To uh, uh, mm -hmm. Brazilian players when his dad was playing at Pumas or something. Um, but yeah, he, he's been playing in, in Brazil. He has been champion in Brazil, Fulminense, and now he's going to be playing for the three. Um, Damn, is this, I didn't know that. is this a new, um, a new, I guess, trajectory that a three can take to kind of get more players abroad? I don't, I don't see why not, man, to be honest with you. I think this is, this is a frontier they haven't explored yet, at least not to the extent of, luring that talent that can actually go to Europe, right? I, I think we've seen it most recently than, you know, over the last, I guess, 15 years uh, than, you know, in the 90s or in the 80s, see the L3 fighting for those dual nats with the USMNT. But we also have to realize that over the last 40 years, there have been, there has been an exodus. Well, maybe not an exodus, but there, there has been a lot of Mexicans leaving Mexico and going to Europe, going to uh, to the United States, to Canada, to, you know, in the middle of nowhere in Asia. I don't know, you name it. And some of these some, some of these guys are having children on those countries. And those, that children are, grow, are growing up on the academy systems of those countries, right? And I think it's, it's a, I think it's a worthwhile solution. I think it will be a good effort from Doña Fede and sus secuaces to invest the money and developing a scouting network of you know dual net uh, talents there's a couple of uh, brothers in um, in switzerland if i'm not mistaken i cannot remember the name right now uh but 
those two brothers, one of them is already playing at the top level in Switzerland with, I think, uh, Luzerne, uh, FC Luzerne. Dude, that's uh, an unheard talent that most likely can get, you know, might be in contention to get cut by Switzerland, but it's maybe on the fifth place in the picking order, right? For Mexico, he will be at least on the second picking order. So right. why not start, you know, touching base with those players, approaching their families and, you know, hey, we'll, we'll do everything that we can to keep your son here in, in Europe. But all you have to do is commit to Mexico, right? You already have your dual net, your uh, your dual passport, so you can play in Europe whatever you want. Um, and Mexico is going to provide you with the oppor the other opportunities that you may not have because you're not necessarily top talent for that country. Yeah, and Mexico can pretty much guarantee you a World Cup spot every four years, yeah. mm -hmm. um, and uh, competing for. You know the Gold Cup and uh, Conca. What is it? Called? The Nations League, uh, where in Europe maybe a team like Switzerland doesn't qualify for the Euros all the time or the World Cup all the time. Uh -huh. Yeah, so there's and always that attractive offer. Mm -hmm. You also get rockstar status in Mexico, dude. Like automatically, <laughs> I mean, yeah. if you're part of La Selección Mexicana, you get that rockstar status no matter what you do. Even more so being a European. Exactly. Um, But yeah, man, we, you know, we saw this strategy kind of work for the USMNT recently, right? Uh, mm -hmm. You know, we, we said Mexico has 17 in Europe, eight of those players playing in the top European leagues. USMNT has 44 players in the, in the top 10 leagues in Europe. Mm -hmm. um, and that's a strategy they've come to be pros at. Um, the, US, I mean, the USA obviously has a huge network worldwide with, you know, the army and all that stuff. So a lot of, they have a lot of uh, kids out there scattered uh, from army parents and stuff like that. And uh, also expats that move along, uh, abroad, like you mentioned with Mexico, a lot of, a lot of Mexican expats moving abroad. Um, so yeah, this is something that can only help Mexico. I mean, it, it'll, it'll bring um, that number up and uh, we've seen uh, success for the USMNT. So probably same Bro. success for Mexico. Over, over the last World Cup, right, every single competitive uh, nation that, that you saw out there had dual nets, whether they were born by immigrants at the country or they were they migrated to that specific country. You know, France had Camavinga, who is not French born, but he migrated to France when he was super young and got his citizenship. Right. I don't I, I have nothing against that. I don't think it should be a. Uh, an obstacle for the national team, specifically talking about Mexico, to you know start scouting out there, uh, because if you if you don't if you're not gonna put your money in developing talent at your own country and making sure that you can ship them out so they can get more competitive, then at least put it where you think you can get a slight advantage, which is finding those dual nets out there. And hell, even if you have like um, foreign players who moved to Mexico and made made a, a life in Mexico. And they have children and families and all that stuff. Also help them out, right? Because those players have an easy access to Europe through their parents or, you know, to other leagues. For example, the first one that comes to my mind, and it's just because I'm, I'm a Tigres fan, uh, is Andre Perignac. He has a, a son who was born in, um, in Monterrey. Why not approach Gignac and be like, hey, man, you can give him a French passport through you. Through you. We'll do everything that we can to put him out there in Europe. No, for sure. I mean, not necessarily the same thing, but I mean, like, like Bebote, right? He's Argentine mm -hmm. um, through his parents that were playing or his dad that was playing Cruz Azul at the time. And uh, he's committed to La Selección. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, that's another good strategy that, you know, could give fruit to, to Mexico, man. Um, a lot to think about, Adrian. Uh, hopefully we start seeing here an exodus of Mexicans going back to Europe um, in the next, in the summer transfer window. Hopefully. Uh, but uh, one can only hope. Um, Adrian, man, as we wrap up this episode, dude, where can our listeners find us? They can always find us on YouTube. Don't forget to subscribe, hit the like button, and turn on the notifications. You can also find us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcast on. Last but not least, you should also pay attention to our YouTube shorts and Instagram because we post stuff every now and then. Yeah, make sure to follow us. And uh, let us know below in the comments uh, what you think of this topic. Why do you think so many Mexicans are coming back to Mexico? Uh, how do you think El Tri should kind of fix this and, you know, find a way to help these young Mexican players uh, not only move to Europe, but thrive in Europe, find places where they, they play. Gerardo Ortega, um, 
he was a good example of how to go there, find a team where you play constantly. Um, it just didn't work out for him in the end in Europe. But uh, like you said, I mean, props for trying for all these guys. Um, mm-hmm. All right, man. Well, it's been another good one, man. We'll see you in the next one. And uh, we got plenty more here in store in PPG. So stick with us. See you, man. Take it easy.